Hi gamers! Nintendo's original DS console was initially met with some skepticism, but uh, it really didn't take long for it to take, take the world by storm, uh, eventually competing neck to neck with the PlayStation 2 for the title of uh, highest selling game console of all time, uh, with over 150 million units sold. That's a lot, and uh, it also translates to a lot of games released for it. Now, I'm, I'm no TV and lost, but uh, I still have here a little over a hundred games for the system, 104 to be exact, and I thought I'd be sharing these with you now. Of course, I also have 3DS, game, 3DS games here, uh, not so many yet, of course, but I'm going to be returning to these uh, maybe this year, maybe next year, when I have more. Uh, but uh, what I really like about the DS is that uh, it, it really the unique hardware choices translated into games that wouldn't have been possible on any other kind of hardware. That's that's really there are really some special special games uh, on the system here. And uh, uh, what I really also like about the system is that it wasn't too powerful. And by that I mean that uh, there was uh, plenty of 2D games on it. With the PSP being of course more powerful, it was geared towards uh, 3D uh, graphics. And you know, let's face it, they, they weren't that hot after a couple of years uh, on the market. But great 2D is always, always a thing of beauty and that's what I like about the DS as well. So plenty of 2D games here as well. But let's check out what, what I have here. First up, a true classic Advance Wars Dual Strike. Get it? Dual Strike DS. <laughs> Surprisingly, that's not that common of a pun in the names of, uh, of DS games. Uh, of course, this is a great successor to the two uh, games on the Game Boy Advance. There was also a second game, Advance Wars Dark Conflict, on the DS, which you can see has a bit of a darker or uh, more gritty uh, art style. Uh, but I, I do rep prefer the cartoony style here on the first three Advance Wars games. Essential, essential games on the DS, for sure. As is Animal Crossing Wild World. This really uh, blew up the bank for Nintendo uh, in terms of Animal Crossing series and uh, I guess it's partly due to the fact that this is a portable game and you can take it with you. Uh, just take a quick visit to your town uh, wherever you are and uh, it just perfectly suits the gameplay of Animal Crossing. Another code, two memories. I guess this, what was it called in, in the US? Trace memory or something like that? Uh, but this is actually one of my favorite DS games. This was a pretty early game in the life of the console. Uh, and, but I was uh, didn't really know much about this, except that uh, yeah, being an early game, there weren't that many games available for it. But this was something that I uh, kind of caught my eye on some games magazine and decided to buy it. This is a very short game, uh, that's that's for sure. Only takes like five hours to complete, but this is really sweet. This was something that really blew my mind uh, about what the DS could, could do as a console. This uses everything. It uses the uh, two screens, the touchpad, the microphone. It actually even uses the physical shape of the console, the clamshell uh, design uh, with its puzzles. This is a, a puzzle game uh, uh, of the highest caliber. Uh, really inventive stuff. Uh, it, it might be uh, might be a, a bit easy in some places, but on some places it, you really have to think so creatively that you, you won't even believe what the answer is to the puzzle. This is a really, really excellent game. Don't spoil yourself by looking at some, some videos of this. Uh, I think this is pretty cheap. I'm not sure. haven't checked eBay uh, for, a, for a while for this game. But pick it up if you see it. Uh, really an excellent game and it's, it's truly one of the best games on the DS still for me. Quite unique. Nice adventure game. 
Bangai Spirits from uh, Treasure. This is a sequel to Nintendo 64's finest 2D shooter. This adds many different weapons and features to the original. Big Brain Academy, the funner uh, uh, of the uh, Train Your Brain uh, series with uh, Dr. Kawashima's brain training coming up later. Blue Dragon Plus, a sequel to the Xbox 360 exclusive RPG. Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare. Can't say I've, I've played this too much on the DS, but it's still a nice curiosity to have. It's a, a full-blown uh, 3D first-person shooter. Then some really great stuff we got here. Castlevania, Dawn, Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin, and Order of Ecclesia. The Game Boy Advance also had a, a trio of 2D Castlevania games and the DS uh, uh, does it also. Really, really good stuff from Konami. Shame they don't really do this nowadays. The series could come back to its 2D roots for sure. Uh, the uh, second and third games added some, some a bit more gimmicks to the core gameplay, so I guess I do prefer the first game here. Of the uh, on the DS, but of course all are all are essential and one of the best games on the system. All of the three of these. Children of Mana, Square Enix has has never really captured the uh, uh, brilliance of Secret of Mana ever since. Well, maybe the sequel on the Super Famicom was. Uh, up to par, but they still uh, still need to translate that over here. I have no idea why they don't do that. They really should. But uh, yeah, none of these uh, sequels have been really up to par of the brilliance of the of the first game. Well, the first game was on the black and white Game Boy, but you'll get my you'll get the idea. Chrono Trigger, a port from Super Nintendo, of course, with some. Nice enhancements like uh, some cutscenes. Uh, uh, not sure what the full list of uh, fixes here are, but still a nice, nice, really, really classic game to have on the DS. And this is really something that I, I talked about in the beginning of the video that the DS didn't really have too much power that. Uh, it would have been, uh, you know, too powerful to have these <laughs> Super Nintendo ports. That's really, really awesome stuff. Contra 4, really nice 2D shooter. Really up to up to par of the uh, lives up to the name Contra for sure. And uh, no, no 3D uh, bullshit here. Just great, great 2D run and gun action. Fantastic stuff. Custom Robo Arena. The Custom Robo series started on the Nintendo 64. Cooking Guide. Can't decide what to eat. Not really a game, uh, but uh, just has recipes and uh, stuff like that. <laughs> really a curiosity. But it just shows how, uh, how widely the DS uh, spread uh, over the uh, over the consumers here that uh, games or software like this was released for it so really special stuff the dark spire a really unique rpg uh, you can play uh, this is a, like it says here a truly classic rpg it has all the clichés uh, that you'd expect from uh, from an old school RPG, but this this is a, a new game, nonetheless not not based on something something old. But you can play as uh, with uh, just this black and white wireframe graphics if you like a, a truly old school <laughs> feel to it, or you can use colorful graphics like this. But yeah, this is a, a nice uh, old school blast from the past. Also includes a music CD here. Nice package. 
Disgaea DS. Sadly, don't have much to say about that because I haven't played it yet. Still sealed, but maybe someday. DK, Jungle Climber. Not a platforming game, but more of a, a puzzle game. Uh, what you do, climb as, uh, as DK here, but uh, uh, not really, uh, uh, can't really compare it to other uh, Donkey Kong games. This is uh, quite a unique experience. And then there were some more Super Nintendo uh, games ported over with these enhanced ports. We got Dragon Quest, the Chapters of the Chosen, which I was this number five, I guess, and uh, Dragon Quest VI, Realms of Reverie. And here we have the other brain training game I was talking about. This became quite a phenomenon in Japan and all over the world as well. And uh, I, I played this myself and had quite a uh, good time. Basically, basically these are quite serious brain teasers. Uh, the game is trying to uh, help your brain with memory and uh, logic and stuff like that. Uh, basic math problems and uh, uh, also some uh, uh, reactive training and uh, just try to give your brain a jolt and apparently this is all uh, scientific stuff and it's all all proven that it works <laughs> and it tells how old your brain is and then again not not really a game uh, more of a software electroplankton Got this nice foil cover here. This is uh, basically a music box. Uh, I guess uh, you have these little creatures, electroplankton, uh, that you have on this little playing field and uh, you can control where they go with uh, arrows and they create music. Uh, or there are other, other, other types of uh, stages as well where you throw your electroplankton on the leaves and uh, they bounce around and the uh, way they bounce around they again create the different kinds of music and uh, quite a really a unique game and it's this basically you just put it on and start start toying with it you don't really even need to know how to make music you just uh, play around with the little creatures and immerse your, yourself with the music. Pretty cool stuff. Elite Beat Agents. Uh, this has quite the cult following. Uh, an excellent uh, rhythm game. Etrian Odyssey from Atlas. Then one of the first games, if not one of the launch games, I guess, Feel the Magic, XYXX. And this was also released in Europe, uh, just with a different name. Here we have Project Rub. And uh, yeah, the game is as weird as the cover and the, the titles suggest. This is really some uh, madcap stuff. Basically, mini game collection uh, with uh, some really unique stuff. Uh, it's it's hard even to explain. You should really take a look at some videos or play it yourself. Can't be too expensive. Then we have a bunch of Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy three, uh, not to be confused with uh, FF three on the Super Nintendo, which was released over here. This is the third game on the uh, the first Famicom. This was never brought out in the West, uh, in English, before the DS, so nice to have this finally here. Whereas Final Fantasy IV is the Final Fantasy II on Super Nintendo, released in the West, but finally here with the right uh, number 4 as well. Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings, one of the spin-offs of the XII series. And then we also have the Crystal Chronicles series. We have here Echoes of Time and Ring of Fates. I kind of like Crystal Chronicles. Haven't really been uh, playing them that much uh, after the GameCube original that I played quite a bit, but I uh, haven't really had the 
I guess you could use some friends uh, with these uh, these games. So haven't really got into the later games, sadly. And even more Final Fantasy games. We got uh, Final Fantasy Tactics A2, Grimoire of the Rift. I got here a, a, a European version and here a US version as well. Yeah, as you can see here how the uh, game boxes are different. Europe has slightly thicker, maybe thanks to the thicker game manuals there were. And uh, of course the uh, US cases is black. Final Fantasy Tactics, absolutely fantastic games. Uh, again, really gorgeous 2D and perfect uh, gameplay. Turn-based strategy games being really on their own on handheld consoles. This is a really a, uh, ironclad classic and a great sequel to the game on the Game Boy Advance and of course the PlayStation 1 see, um, original. So got here on the back <laughs> a little bonus game, Easy Piano, and uh, it comes with a, a piano add-on. Uh, this wasn't expensive, I had to get it, uh, this is still sealed, I don't know how it plays, but uh, again, some really unique stuff on the DS. <laughs> then uh, Ghost Trick, Phantom Detective. Capcom did a lot of games on the DS, of course the most famous being the Ace Attorney series, but this is a really nice nice game as well. Uh, kind of continuing with the same uh, same style of 2D gameplay and uh, uh, puzzles and uh, I like that, but quite a quite a unique setting where, like here, you have died and uh, you try to solve uh, your uh, uh, own murder by uh, uh, haunting, basically. <laughs> Golden Sun Dark Dawn. The third game in the Golden Sun series. The first two being on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, gorgeous stuff. Again here, uh, really, really nice 2D graphics. I just love this. And uh, Golden Sun is one of my favorite uh, JRPG series. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. This was quite a surprise from Rockstar that they made this for the DS. And uh, it's it's a really nice, unique... At the time it was an exclusive game uh, for the DS. This returns to the top-down action that the first games in the GTA series had. Uh, but it's a, it really is a fantastic game and not to, not to be overlooked by its... Uh, it's graphical style. Excellent, excellent game. Was later ported to the PSP as well, but it uh, started on the DS and uh, many of the mini games are, are best played on the touchscreen here. And uh, like with the Easy Piano, another uh, accessory here we have Guitar Hero on tour. Activision really uh, couldn't think of uh, enough ways to produce plastic crap to the world, so here we have a, a, a guitar that you could plug onto your uh, DS and uh, play with these uh, four buttons here. And uh, well, I guess it was uh, somewhat somewhat uh, innovative uh, to do this, but uh, yeah, well, too much is too much. Uh, you could you could have toned down the Guitar Hero stuff, Activision. Uh, maybe in time to save it, but we'll see how it goes in the future. Henry Hatsworth uh, in the Puzzling Adventure. Really nice puzzle game. Hotel Dusk Room 215. This is actually from the same makers of the, of the uh, Another Code game that I praised. Uh, in the beginning of the video, but I just couldn't get into Hotel, Hotel Dusk as much. It kind of has the same same feel with uh, lots of text and uh, uh, with the uh, character design here, but uh, this just uh, doesn't 
uh, doesn't move fast enough for me. You're basically in this this hotel here, at least in another code you had uh, very nice varied environments, but I just couldn't get into Hotel Dusk as much. But still a nice, uh, unique, modern uh, adventure game. Inazuma 11, uh, level 5's uh, football RPG uh, with a <laughs> a great, a great twists in the design here. Quite a quite a unique game. Not really a football game, not really an RPG game, but something in the middle. Then we have a Japanese uh, import Ketsui. This is uh, Ketsui was uh, once uh, heralded as the best. Uh, uh, best game that uh, uh, that were on the arcades, a shooter game that was on the arcades that hasn't been ported over to uh, home consoles. They tried a port with the PlayStation 2, but the uh, PlayStation 2 had uh, too little power to uh, run the game properly. But uh, no, this isn't a, a straight up port. This is basically, a, uh, I guess you could say that this is a, a boss battle game. Uh, not uh, not a straight up port of the arcade original, uh, which was later released on the Xbox 360. Finally, but this is still a, a really a nice uh, manic shooter on the DS. Something that uh, you wouldn't think that the machine is uh, capable of or uh, best suited for, but this works out a charm. Also includes uh, uh, a DVD. I think a super play DVD if I remember correctly. So a nice, nice package here. Kingdom Hearts, three, five, eight over two days. Uh, haven't played it yet. Still sealed. Kirby Mass Attack and also. Kirby Superstar Ultra, Mass Attack being uh, uh, more of a traditional uh, platforming game just with a lot of Kirby's and uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra uh, is, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, from the uh, Super Nintendo an enhanced port. Good stuff. Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. A sequel to Hotel Dusk, as you probably can see from the character design here. Uh, but like I said, I, I couldn't really get into Hotel Dusk as much, so this is still sealed, but I probably will open it one day. Lots of uh, gems still to be played on the DS. <laughs> then we get to the Zeldas. Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I got here one opened and one sealed copy. Well, hey, I'm a collector. And uh, the same here with Zelda Spirit Tracks. But uh, I'm a big Zelda fan. And uh, you might think that here comes some more praise about some essential DS games. And, well, I guess these are, are uh, uh, still uh, essential games uh, if you uh, think about just uh, DS, uh, the DS games. But these were, if I'm truthful, um, a bit of a letdown for me. This, uh, especially the game world. Well, the Phantom Hourglass still had uh, a decent game world, uh, but uh, Spirit Tracks, it's 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 a huge letdown. Where we have just have the uh, train uh, to travel around the world, uh, and uh, well, there's some. Uh, exploration that you can do but not really much and that really is uh, they threw away the best part of a Zelda game the free exploration and uh, I just had the train train here in this game and it's it just isn't the same there are still nice uh, puzzles and dungeons and action and it's it's nice to see a, a top-down Zelda after a long time but uh, yeah this this just uh, weren't weren't for me. I really didn't like the graphical style even as well uh, with the uh, 3D graphics uh, with that top-down view. Uh, I would have uh, greatly preferred that they just use 2D graphics. But uh, yeah, hopefully Zelda will uh, uh, 
they will be doing more Zelda games in, in the vein of uh, 3DS's uh, A Link Between Worlds. That was amazing. But uh, yeah, DS Zelda's were uh, a bit of a letdown for me. Still excellent games, but a letdown in Zelda standards, I guess. Mario Kart DS. Yeah, I guess I don't need to even say more about that. An essential game to have. Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Uh, I really love the Mario and Luigi series. Great uh, humor, great Nintendo take on the RPG genre, and uh, a great story as well. Uh, well, it's 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 usually uh, in these these games. Uh, it's uh, a bit of a twist on the old Princess uh, Zelda, uh, Zelda <laughs> Princess Peach gets uh, kidnapped by Bowser, but uh, yeah, they get some really nice humor out of it uh, always. And uh, here we have uh, the. Uh, I guess this is the only game that you actually have uh, Baby Mario and Baby Luigi with Grown Up Mario and Grown Up, grown up Luigi. So a bit of a landmark came in that respect. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Miniland Mayhem. Uh, a bit of a puzzle game in the vein of Lemmings, uh, I, I could say. Yeah, good, uh, unique gameplay there as well. And uh, yeah, another, oh, I guess I, I had misplaced this. Uh, the third game in the Mario and Luigi series, Bowser's Inside Story. And uh, this, I would say, that is the best of the whole series. Everything just, uh, everything just uh, came together here in this game. The gameplay and the humor. I just love this. Mario Party DS. Not really much to say about that. Then we got some Mega Man games, Mega Man 5, uh, Battle Network 5, Double Team DS. And uh, I gotta say, I haven't played really Battle Network games. I guess I'll, I'll have to try them out one day, but this is the only one uh, that I have, basically just for collecting purposes. I, I like my Mega Man. Uh, uh, Platforming and action, classically, not really digging the Battle Network's and RPG strategy hybrid, but uh, yeah, still nice to see some uh, good support from Capcom for the DS. But uh, these are the truer uh, Mega Man games for the DS, but still uh, quite something different that you'd expect. Mega Man ZX and ZX Advent. These are uh, side-scrolling action games, like uh, any good Mega Man game should be, but uh, we, we, we do have some uh, never-before-seen protagonists and uh, quite a lot of uh, story as well, lots of talking and uh, uh, lots of uh, unique, uh, uh, unique uh, inventions to the classic formula here, which I do think that they are, are really a di distraction from the main thing, which is the action. Uh, I really would have hoped that they would continue either the Z uh, series or the X series uh, in the future, but uh, still, uh, these ZX games are just something a bit different uh, with a uh, familiar feel still around there. Metal Slug 7. Metal Slug being one of my favorite favorite game series. Uh, and uh, I do have, have them all on the original Neo Geo, but this is a, a unique game, uh, exclusive game on the DS, the seventh, or well maybe the eighth game in the series, uh, when you count Metal Slug 2 and X as separate games, and uh, this is an excellent game. Uh, they do have the uh, original sprites uh, here, 
which is just uh, just fine by me. Uh, they they do have new bosses and all that, but many of the graphics are are being recycled, which uh, just you know feels like feels like home. Metal Slug uh, sprites are some of the best uh, best on in the business uh, and uh, most uh, uh, well animated as well. So why change it too much? Great action here. And then we have Meteos, quite a unique puzzle game uh, made by Tetsuo Mizuguchi's Q Entertainment. They made uh, Luminous for the PSP and the Meteos for the DS. Then, uh, not actually a full game, but just the demo that came with the, the original fat DS model, uh, Metroid Prime Hunters first hunt. I, I, I'm I still missing the uh, full game and uh, I, this is um, a 3D shooter. Of course uh, people, people, uh, people were uh, expecting uh, the next uh, uh, Metroid Prime game and um, this really isn't up to par but it does work f quite well. Uh, you shoot with the uh, move with the D-pad and shoot with the uh, uh, touch screen and uh, it works, works quite well and uh, has some pretty decent uh, graphics for the time and for the DS uh, at least. Uh, but uh, of course I'm yeah, still, still not, not really uh, even close to the grandeur of uh, Metroid Prime games. Then we have a Metroid Prime Pinball, which uh, also includes uh, a rumble pack shaped like a Game Boy Advance cart that uh, uh, rumbles your, is powered through the uh, DS and uh, rumbles your, your machine accordingly. Uh, people were quite <laughs> appalled when they first announced this. Uh, that now Metroid is a is a pinball game and uh, Samus Aran is uh, uh, is uh, being ashamed with this game. But really, this is nothing different. That in the 80s and 90s, every movie that came out also had a corresponding pinball table produced for it. And this is really just what it what it is. Uh, it's a Metroid themed pinball table. Nothing uh, that dramatic and uh, it's really a, a nice nice pinball. It could have uh, could have more more tables I guess but that's that's true with uh, pretty much any uh, digital pinball game but still nice to have on the DS. Oh. Nano Stray 2. Uh, quite a Flashy uh, shooter, good stuff. And a nice, uh, nice future classic, if it isn't already, New Super Mario Brothers. This was a really nice surprise that Nintendo uh, announced back in the day that uh, Mario is gonna uh, return to its roots. And uh, yeah, this is uh, a really nice. Uh, revisitation to some simpler game mechanics, you know, 2D Mario games had been uh, growing more and more complex ever since, uh, well, the first Mario game, Super Mario Brothers game, uh, with uh, 3 and uh, Super Mario World, uh, you know, you could fly and uh, do everything there and uh, Yoshi's Island getting uh, even more uh, strayed from the uh, course that the series had, but this is a nice, nice return to the roots and uh, just good uh, old-fashioned uh, uh, platforming, and uh, but still it does have plenty of new power-ups and uh, new tricks up its sleeve. Uh, the best platforming game on the DS, an essential game. Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword has some of the best graphics on the DS, for sure. Great action. Nintendogs Labrador and Friends Nintendogs was of course a phenomenon back in the day and uh, of course I even though I'm more of a cat person I had to get this 
as well and I had some fun, fun with this, really a, a charming game. Okami Din, a sequel to the PlayStation 2 original and uh, really a, a charming game I just love. Love Okami, uh, much in the vein of Zelda, but this is of course perfectly suited to the DS with its uh, paintbrush mechanic. It looks looks quite nice on the DS as well. Orcs and Elves. And then we get to the uh, Phoenix Wright series. Uh, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. Justice for All. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, wrong, <laughs> wrong uh, order here. Of course, this is the first game in the series, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. And uh, also we have Ace Attorney, Miles Edgeworth uh, Investigations. Uh, so Capcom really did a lot of these uh, on the DS. I, th I think there were some uh, as well that weren't released over in the West, just in Japan. Not, I can't be sure. But this uh, actually originated in on the Game Boy Advance, and uh, this is basically a Game Boy Advance port with uh, with uh, the DS uh, features tacked on and uh, one extra. Uh, case added also to the to the Game Boy Advance game. Not many people know this, but uh, still uh, the series came uh, into its own uh, later on, on later uh, installments here, and uh, just some of the best uh, adventure puzzle solving on um, on any any handheld ever. So really a, a classic series. Pycross DS. And then uh, we get to Pokemon games, uh, which uh, if you've seen my videos you'll know that I haven't really played Pokemon games. I, I do enjoy collecting them and I do have a bunch because there were many many games uh, on the original DS and now continuing on on the 3DS as well. But we'll just go through this, not much to say about this, but of course I, I do understand how important games these are and uh, still a phenomenon after all these years. So gotta hand it to Pokemon. We got a Pokemon Soul Silver, which includes the Poke Walker uh, uh, step uh, counter machine. Pokemon Platinum, Platinum version. And then a black. I got here one opened and uh, one sealed. And the same with white and then they also continued on with the black 2 and white 2 so here I have white 2 as well and finally Pokemon Conquest which uh, isn't uh, the traditional Pokemon game but uh, has more of a uh, strategy uh, RPG feel to it And then we get to Polarium. Also have here one opened and one sealed copy. And uh, Polarium is my favorite puzzle game on the DS. This uh, was one of the, I think, one of the launch games. So I, I picked this up uh, mainly for that reason, but also, uh, you know, the, the Tetris uh, uh, was uh, such an iconic game for the black and white Game Boy. So I, I truly feel that uh, puzzle games are some of the best games that you can play on your uh, platform, um, uh, handheld game console. And uh, so I, I definitely needed a, a great puzzle game for my new DS and uh, luckily Polarium was uh, up to par. Really a quality game. I haven't really seen uh, basically you're drawing shapes uh, uh, trying to switch uh, black tiles to white and vice versa trying to clear uh, rows of them by turning everything into the same color and I haven't really seen uh, 
still to this day a game with a similar type of gameplay so this is quite unique and I was quite innovative with the DS touchscreen and uh, I just spent many many hours with this game excellent excellent game you really should pick this up this is dirt cheap and uh, highly recommend it and then uh, even though I just said that Polarium is my favorite puzzle uh, <laughs> puzzle game on the DS, uh, but this, uh, these are uh, a bit different, even though this, uh, I would also say that these are my favorite puzzle games, the Professor Layton series. There were a total of four games on the DS. Here we have The Curious Village, Pandora's Box, The Lost Future and Spectre's Call. And uh, I've, I've said this many times in my i videos that I just adore Professor Layton series. I've played all six games through uh, with uh, haven't uh, haven't missed a puzzle yet because a gentleman uh, leaves no puzzle unsolved like the great professor here says and uh, great story even though I'm not that much into the story I, I'm, I'm there for the uh, puzzles for sure but the story is just uh, just a little extra there but uh, I just love the puzzles and uh, the fact that they are also varied and have no bearing on the uh, actual plot and uh, you know you could be anywhere in the game uh, talking to anyone and uh, they just whip out uh, a puzzle from their pocket and uh, it, it could be related to anything so uh, you never know what you're getting with the Professor Layton, Layton games but uh, these are, are my favorite among my favorite games uh, on the DS full stop not just puzzle games but highly highly recommended Then a Rhythm Paradise, another uh, rhythm game uh, with a, uh, maybe like a, a WarioWare-esque graphics here, inspired uh, graphics, really weird stuff. Ridge Racer DS, Scribble Notes course a very charming game series and uh, perfectly suited to the uh, touch screen of the DS. SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters DS. Then again one of the launch games Super Mario 64 DS. Got here one opened and one sealed. And uh, yeah, what can I say? Super Mario 64 is one of the best games ever. Uh, but uh, of course, that's uh, one of the reasons it was so great is that it also uh, introduced, was introduced with the uh, Nintendo 64's groundbreaking controller. Uh, whereas on the DS, uh, you didn't get an analog controller, you got just the D pad. Of course, there was the option to control. Uh, Mario or any of the other uh, three new characters here uh, that weren't part of the original game, Wario, Yoshi and Luigi. Uh, you could control them with the touchscreen with your thumb on the touchscreen but it, it wasn't really it was a, a pu poor uh, uh, excuse of, a, uh, of an analog stick you would be better off with the d-pad and this wasn't unplayable but just wasn't wasn't quite as uh, uh, didn't play quite as well as the original of course but there were uh, several changes uh, even though you had played uh, the original to death uh, you could still get some uh, well, a lot of a lot of fun out of this game, and I uh, had some mini games as well included. Uh, I gotta tell you, this was uh, this was really fun. Uh, this was the first DS game that, uh, of course, I had, and uh, I thought that they would be making this with all DS games. The manual is not, uh, you know, sideways, but it's top down, like with the uh, screens of the. 
DS console itself. So at the time I thought that they would be making every manual from there on on the DS like this. But uh, they didn't. This was pretty much the only one. But it's pretty, pretty fun stuff still. Siberia Tetris Party Deluxe and then here we have Sonic Colors. This is a limited edition pack which includes Sonic figurine and some friends here as well. And uh, yeah, Sonic Colors was one of the better Sonic games uh, that uh, came uh, that have come in uh, in modern times uh, also came out on the Wii and that was a 3D game and this is a, a 2D platformer and quite a good one at that so one of the better Sonics for sure Walk With Me another one of these non-game releases includes uh, uh, two uh, Activity meters, which uh, count your count your steps along the way, and you could uh, connect it to the DS and uh, uh, compare your uh, uh, results with uh, the rest of your family. I guess uh, this is still sealed. I'm a nerd. I don't. I don't walk. The world ends with you. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm no TV and lost, and that's because he's uh, nuts about uh, handheld uh, consoles and uh, especially the DS. And uh, I believe this is his favorite game on the DS, and uh, uh, quite a unique uh, RPG from Square Enix. Nice to see that they can uh, uh, can do something else other than than Final Fantasy sequels. And uh, uh, really a unique, uh, unique setting here, and uh, uh, unique graphical style. And uh, well, <laughs> what am I talking about? You just go check out TV and Lust's uh, review for the game. The link is now in the screen. Come back then. <laughs> Warhammer Forty Thousand Squad Command. Uh, WarioWare, do it yourself. And uh, uh, this was. Uh, I really like the WarioWare series. Here we also have the WarioWare Touched. And uh, WarioWare, uh, it has always had, uh, uh, you know, some kind of new innovation to warrant its uh, release. Of course, the first WarioWare on the Game Boy Advance was, uh, well, the first game, and then when it was released on the game uh, GameCube, it was all about uh, multiplayer games. WarioWare touched here at the um, touchscreen, and uh, on the Game Boy Advance there was also Twisted, which uh, included the uh, motion sensor cartridge, uh, so you could twist around the uh, game console, and uh, on the on, on the Wii you had of course the motion controls further refined, so WarioWare is quite a varied, varied game series, I just love it. Uh, great humor and great micro games, but here you could. Uh, this also had, of course, uh, games that you could play already. But you could also design your own. You could draw the graphics for it and uh, uh, write the script. Uh, you know what happens in the game, which uh, sprites are moving, and how do you win and uh, stuff like that. So really nice stuff. And you could also uh, upload these to the Wii version and play them on the on your TV. So really a, a nice piece of. Software here, if you uh, if you're up to the task task of uh, designing your own games. But there was also a, a traditional platforming Wario, Wario Master of Disguise. Good stuff. And one final game here, Yoshi's Island DS. Uh, it's uh, it's not as good as the original Yoshi's Island for sure, but it's still nice too. Nice to see, uh, uh, always nice to see Yoshi in action, and uh, this was uh, really uh, I just love the graphical style of the you know the crayon uh, drawn style and uh, 
uh, impossibly cute uh, baby Wario here and baby Donkey Kong. Uh, so, <laughs> not just baby Mario this time around. And that was it for my DS collection. Again, a very long video. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye.